Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is Martin from martinmixing.com and today we'll be talking about top-down versus bottom-up mixing. Let's do this. So I know that many people and indeed many mixing courses promote a top-down mixing approach. Top-down mixing means that after creating a rough balance of your mix, instead of starting to process individual tracks on their own and maybe soloing them and working on individual tracks first, you start on the song as a whole. So you do some processing on the master bus, then go back to groups. You would have a lot of groups with instruments and vocals and backing vocals and however you want to chop up your song basically. Now I want to talk about whether this approach works or not and for this I want to have a look at a session I have here in Logic. So let's do it. So as you can see here we have a somewhat comprehensive mix. We have uh, your standard drums, bass, a bit of uh, percussion here. We have a bunch of guitars, keys and a slight purple color, a crowd noise that's just an effect and then a few vocals. With the top-down mixing approach what you would do is you would go into the mixer window like this, you would set some basic levels, kind of create a rough mix if you will, uh, set your pan maybe, and then instead of going in and solo your individual drums and solo your individual instruments, uh, you would start processing your master bus first. So you'd apply some EQ, you would apply some compression maybe, and then once you have some kind of result, I don't quite know what kind of result because personally I think this uh, method is flawed and I'll let you know later why. Then you would go back and you would uh, start treating your buses. So for this you would have to have a drum bus for instance, so you, you would start tweaking your drums as a whole again, uh, which doesn't sound like a bad idea but I think it is. And then you would treat your guitars as a group again and then you would go back and you would uh, create a group for your synths and your vocals. So what this means is that in your mixing process you would end up with in this song let's say one, two, three, four, five, maybe six subgroups um, for not that many instruments actually. This is more of an explainer video, we're not actually be listening to anything because I don't mix this way because I think this method is fundamentally flawed. It does work, I think it's a great idea if you have one or two assistants who will gain stage all of your tracks perfectly to the tenth of the dB, who will make sure that maybe some basic EQing is done first, which kind of uh, means that you're not even doing top-down mixing anymore if you do some EQ first already. And um, if you have the time to do a lot of preparation work and if you think that you're so good that you will never need revisions. Because what top-down mixing does in my opinion is it pins you into a corner. Uh, it puts you in a place where there is no escape, there is no more flexibility, there is no... It's very hard to make changes in your mix um, once you have run all of your signals through very complex signal flows and very complex complex busing systems. So let's just have a look at some logistics here. Let's say I have a top-down mix session and uh, maybe even a top-down mixing template. So I will apply EQ on the master bus um, and then I apply some compression because of course we all know compression, especially everyone is trying to sell us compression even though I think compression can be your worst enemy when you're mixing. Uh, but of course the master bus compressor, everyone wants to have a master bus compressor. Uh, even though some good mixes don't. But uh, anyway, so you put let's say 4 dB of compression, then into this somehow you group all of your drums and you start working on your drums and then you apply compression on your drums there as well. Uh, and EQ as well. Now just the fact that you changed your EQ and applied extra compression on your drums means that now the compression on the master bus will already behave completely differently. So you already did something counterproductive, in my opinion. Uh, then you bring in the bass, which and also you EQ again and uh, compress. Then you do the same with guitars, you do the same with vocals, and then you end up with multiple layers of compression. But I don't think that by the time you're done with all of the subgroups that your master bus will be doing exactly what you wanted. And what's even worse, 
volume changes of one track will throw off the whole balance of your mix completely again because if you have a bit of compression on your master bus already and on your groups and then you decide okay I want to make my guitar louder well now you're running that guitar into a compressor on your guitar bus and by making one guitar louder the other guitars will become quieter because of the extra compression and by making that one guitar louder You'll also apply more compression on your mix bus, which then pushes everything quieter, you know, if you run it hot enough, of course. So, personally, I think this is a massive flaw in the system. The second major flaw, in my opinion, is EQ in the first place. So, I would never dream of uh, being able to clean up a mix on the master bus, that's, that's impossible. Now, I understand that uh, most people advocating for a system will use very subtle changes. They will use a, a bit of treble boost, and let's be fair, the first thing everyone does is boosting treble because treble is always missing in, in any recording, uh, just because our ears are used to bright sounds from radio and pop music. So try to fix independent little issues with one broad solution. I think that's just not possible. We have to look at individual tracks here. So let's just imagine you have um, guitars and vocals which have a lot of excess bass or a lot of low end. Would you then go on a master bus and start to reduce low end? Well, how will that affect your kick and your bass? Now, obviously someone who uses this setup a lot will not do that, but someone who is starting out and has bought into the system might make this huge mistake and ruining his mix completely. So personally, I'm much more fan of the good old bottom-up approach, which means that I take every single instrument, I will have uh, an initial balancing, I'll have an initial panning, of course, but then I'll start and solo every instrument and try to EQ, you know, fix the mistakes, fix the obvious problems that we know we have in recording, which will be usually mud, uh, harshness, uh, too much or not enough uh, top end, usually not enough top end. And usually there's some low end problem. There's always some rumble or something that needs to be cut off with a low cut. So personally, I like to use this approach and then I'll apply compression on individual tracks if needed as well, instead of applying them on a group where all of these instruments will kind of play together and manipulate the compression together. And the third and probably biggest fundamental flaw of top-down mixing is that once you start applying reverbs or delays on your individual tracks, let's say you have a vocal that is now running through two or three different buses with two or, two or three different layers of EQ, and you've gotten a result which is great without having to even EQ your individual vocal track. And now let's just have a look at this session here again. Let's say all of these vocals here are running into one bus and they sound great and everything is amazing, but then I decide, okay, I want to add some reverb only to this single vocal. Now, in a top-down mixing setup, it might be the case that I actually don't have any processing on this track, meaning that when I send this into a reverb, I'm sending the uncompressed, unequued, unfixed track into the reverb, which will give me a bad reverb sound and a bad delay, a bad echo. What, what will happen is I'll create a long tail of something that is not good because it is muddy, for instance, or because it is harsh. So you're sending all of these harsh, muddy signals into your vocal, into your reverbs and your echoes, clouding up your mix. So again, I cannot stress how complicated it is to work with a top-down mixing session. I tried to use this method, I tried it because I wanted to give it a fair shot, but I always found myself forced in a corner. It was really difficult to make level changes, it was really difficult to apply reverbs and echoes, and there were these little things that just made me abandon this completely. And yes, there's even one more flaw with this mixing setup, which is revisions and creating stems. Once you have such a complex busing system set up, it becomes even more complicated to export stems of your sessions with the appropriate compression and EQ settings on all of your tracks, so that the song actually adds up to the same mix once you um, add the individual stems together again further down the line. And revisions, I mean, forget about making revisions, and it's, it becomes incredibly complicated once you realize that maybe the artist's vision is different from yours in the mix, and this happens a lot, especially if you work with someone for the first time. So you send off the first mix, you're happy with it, and then uh, you receive a lot of notes back, and then you realize, oh man, 
I cannot make these easy changes, like I cannot make the vocal louder because then everything else will become quieter because of compression. Um, changing the guitar sound will also change the drums or bass or whatever. So it's a very complex system and I, I think it's incredibly difficult to work with it. So personally I'm going to stick to the good old bottom-up mixing a method which I've been using for the last 14 years, I think, because this works, it always works. I know I'm in a safe place, I'm not using crazy routing setups, I know I can change every effect, I know I can change every EQ, every tonality, I know I can change everything at all time if I feel like I have to, or if the artist tells me that I have to do that. So this is my quick summary of top-down versus bottom-up mixing. Let me know your thoughts on this and let me know what kind of mixing methods you are using and why and how it is working for you. I'm actually really curious about that. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It actually helps me a lot. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Until then, happy mixing. Bye-bye.